Welcome to part two of CAN Diagnosis. In the first video, we took a look at a good CAN signal, and we also saw what some bad signals look like. Now, if you remember, this is one that resembles short to ground on CAN low. If you take a look at the spikes of CAN high, it is still going above 2.5 volts into that 3.5 volt range. And our idle voltage is sitting at zero rather than 2.5 where it's supposed to be. So we can definitely tell that this is a short on CAN low by using PicoScope. So one of the best things that we can do from there is gather all the diagnostic information that we can. So next thing would be to take a look at a CAN bus check. Okay, so in this situation of this particular problem, let's take a look at the CAN bus check. Now remember, shorts on CAN low can actually fool the CAN bus check. Here it shows that a CAN gateway ECU is communicating. Uh, now it says that it's not communicating. And now there we have the airbag ECU says it's communicating. And now everything's back to communicating. And it will go back and forth from red to yellow. This is not actual communication. Remember, shorts equal no communication on the CAN network. So uh, from there, one of the best things that we can do is figure out where on CAN low it is shorted. So let's get on TIS to look at additional information, diagrams and EWDs. So here we are searching the CAN network. And let's start with the repair manual information. Okay, here is the system diagram. Now, Notice that we've got both a high-speed bus or V-bus and then we also have a sub-bus. And uh, we can see the different ECUs labeled both on V-bus as well as sub-bus. Now the sub-bus is connected by branch lines for the, uh, going off of the main bus. So we are going to be connected through the DLC3 which is that's where we were connected at the beginning of this video. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the entire diagram uh, where we're connected. So we're connected to the DLC3. And here is the main bus itself, or VBUS. Looks like we've got two junction connectors. CAN number two junction connector and CAN number one junction connector just below it there. And here we can see all the different ECUs that are connected uh, by branch lines from that junction connector to each given ECU. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the EWD. Now those junction connectors are going to be the key as to how we can figure out where our short on CAN low is. So let's find them here in the EWD. Okay, there's our DLC3, and then here's one junction connector, and then right down there is our number two junction connector. Okay, so we can see the main line that's connecting the two. So good practice for diagnosis would be to go ahead and separate half of the junction or half of the CAN network from the second half of the, the CAN network. Okay, so I'm going to enlarge it here a little bit so we can see what's going on. Get rid of the tree so we can focus in on these two con con junction connectors themselves. So the method we're going to use is referred to as the split half method. By separating half of it up and then seeing what our results are, we can know whether we need to go to the upper half or the lower half. So we're going to go to this J16 junction connector and disconnect it and see what it does to our PICO pattern. J16 happens to be in the A pillar on the passenger side. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect J16 and isolate the upper half of the CAN network from the lower half. Okay, this is what we're getting. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a trigger 
on channel B so that we can take a look at what type of pattern our look we have going on here. I'm going to use an auto trigger. Just need to choose channel B and then put it up where I'm getting the pattern there. Now, based on what we had in video 1, this is an open on can low. So why did it go from looking like a short to looking like an open on can low? Well, remember, we've got PicoScope connected with channel A on terminal 6 of the DLC3, or in other words, can high. And we have channel B connected to terminal 14 of the DLC3, or in other words, can low. Now, when we go ahead and disconnect J16, we are, in essence, taking out one of the terminating resistors in this CAN network. So with it removed, now we have, in essence, an open. So we're still connected to the upper half. So what does this mean? It means that our short is in the lower half because it's no longer present. So the strategy now is to go ahead and hook J16 back up. And once we hook J16 back up, now we're going to eliminate can low for all the individual ECUs on J16. Okay, so we know that the short is on can low based on our Pico pattern. And we know that our problem exists somewhere here connected to J16. So we have various different ECUs that we can pay attention to their can low line specifically. Now as I diagnose this, I'd like to point out also that there are some additional connectors specifically for a couple of different ECUs that intersect here on can low. It's good strategy to go ahead and pay attention to those so I can possibly disconnect those. Okay guys, we are in luck because when it comes to these junction connectors or, or connectors in general right there, we have IS4 and IH1. And IS4, when I disconnected that, I went from having what looks like a short on can low to, let me disconnect it, and uh, we come up with this. So what does that mean? That means that our short is between IS4 and the skid control ECU connector. So there, we used CAN to be able to diagnose where exactly our problem was. So I know it's on CAN low, so it's between IS4 and the skid control ECU. So let's sum our activity up here. First of all, PicoScope is a very powerful tool when it comes to CAN network diagnosis. Also, use all available resources, system diagrams, EWDs, and CAN bus checks to plan your diagnosis. Also, try techniques like the split half method and know exactly what Pico is telling you. And then, be systematic with your diagnosis. Don't rush anything. Take your time and make sure you understand everything that's happening. If you follow these different methods, you will be effective at diagnosing CAN network problems. Thanks.